What is up everyone? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're having a good day. This is Josh from VHU and we are going to take our next step in the Kerbal Space Program tutorial. If you didn't watch my last few videos in the uh, be on the basics of the game, definitely check those out. Uh, if you did, we're going to apply all the techniques we have learned and we are going to begin our uh, our mission, I guess, to get to the moon. Uh, we're going to apply all the techniques we learned, um, including the advanced staging and fuel lines and hopefully that'll get us to the moon so I'm gonna walk you through the basic steps in this video of building the rocket we're gonna get it up into orbit and get it launched to the moon and then the second part of the video uh, which you'll see at a later day we are going to um, do the moon approach get into a lunar orbit and land it so this is going to be our uh, design right now um, there are many designs you can do to get to get there uh, I'm gonna do it the big old rocket way so first thing you're going to do is build a one-man capsule. First thing we have to do is build the lander. So you're going to put the capsule, put the parachute on top, decoupler as we always do. Um, put a uh, T-800 fuel tank underneath and you're going to put an engine on the bottom. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the LV-909 engine. Uh, it's a weak engine but that's okay. Uh, you know what, we're using a bigger tank so let's go with a bigger engine. And then Let's go with utilities, and we're going to use the LT2 landing strut, make sure you have it in 4 times symmetry, and put it somewhere near the bottom because you are going to need to have room for the uh, legs to extend. You want the legs to extend, legs do extend pretty far. Okay, so the next thing we need is a mobility enhancer, also known as a ladder. Telus LV Bay mobility enhancer, make sure you have symmetry back on one. Oops. And you're going to put that there. Now you're going to see there is more room needed, more uh, ladder. So we're going to attach another one right there. And that's it. That's pretty much our lander. Uh, you don't technically need a fuel tank that large to get you uh, to the moon and back, but we are going to anyways, just in case. So we're going to go back to structural, add a decoupler. So we're now going to build our main uh, rocket. So we're going to use what's called a... Buckle Max brand adapter, you find it in the structural tab. First one in the middle. What that does is convert you from the small tank size to the large. So then you're going to click on propulsion and go into the Rocco Max 32 fuel tank. And we're going to go ahead and put, um, let's put four. And then underneath that, you're going to put the big engine. Okay, one thing we are forgetting here, let's go ahead and correct that. Is you're going to take, start the, remove the decoupler. You're going to add an RCS fuel tank to this, and then put the decoupler. Um, so you want to have the capsule, the parachute, the capsule, the RCS fuel tank, and then the decoupler. Um, so we actually we should probably fix the ladder too. There we go. Um, the reason you want the RCS is because we are going to have RCS on the. Um, let's put that in right now. Let's go into control. RCS thruster. What that does is basically uses a separate fuel tank. And those little thrusters will help you turn the ship once you're in space. And actually helps when you're getting out into space as well. It just gives you more control of the ship. Once you get into an orbit and you have to get the rocket positioned to do controlled burns. It is very heavy so it takes a very long time to, to uh, adjust the rocket. Um, and that makes you have to wait longer to do controlled burns because they take you several rotations around the earth to rotate a rocket that'll be this large. Um, so that'll help get you there faster. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add what we learned in the last video, which is about the advanced staging. We're going to add a decoupler here on the bottom, uh, maybe slightly below middle there. And you're going to go propulsion and add some more of those tanks. Now it can be a pain in the ass to add them to the to the the tank sometimes you have to kind of click them onto the side here and then drag them on um, I got pretty lucky here and you want to be even maybe a little bit lower and once again you're gonna add two of those tanks now what we're gonna add here is two three um, three is enough we're gonna add a little bit more just uh, just for the extra fuel now there's a few things we're gonna add to make this more structurally sound struts going from here to the main tank um, this is going to be overkill, but struts here. And do the same thing on the other side. And really, that's pretty much it. 
Uh, make sure you add the RCS thrusters. I added eight of them. And we're pretty much it. The only thing we really have to do now is the staging. So, oh, nope, sorry, we forgot one thing. Propulsion, fuel lines, make sure you have symmetry on from outside to the inside. Um, if you didn't watch my last video, the reason for the fuel lines is you're going to have fuel transfer from the outside tanks to the inside. All three engines are going to be burning from their corresponding tanks. The outside tanks will not only be fueling the outside engines, but they'll also be supplying fuel to the middle tank. So once the outside tanks run out of fuel and we decouple them, uh, the middle tank will be full. Okay, so pretty much it. Let's just do the staging now. So we want to have all three engines burning at the same time. Spacebar once will detach the outside tanks. The next spacebar will detach the whole entire ship. Spacebar again will start the rocket for the landing stage. And then the final stage will decouple the capsule and then the space again for the parachute. So that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and uh, launch this baby. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and launch this baby now. Uh, before we do launch, uh, you're going to press the R and the T button. Pushing R allows you to turn RCS, which allows you to get more control of the ship using the RCSs that we installed, the RCS thrusters. Um, so SAS is for some assistance in the control, stability control. Hold the throttle for space, and away we go. So the same rules are going to apply from my past videos. Once we get to 150 meters a second, we are going to throttle down basically to conserve some fuel to allow us to get us further uh, into the atmosphere. And then once we get to about 10,000 meters or so, we are going to throttle back up and head to our goal. Now most people, again, like in, in videos I have said in the past, people will go to 90 degrees. Personally, I prefer to go to 270. Um, that's just my opinion either way. It's, it's easy to slingshot around the moon and uh, get to where you need to go. So we have passed 150 meters a second. Try and use as little control as you can, um, as little adjustments as you have to make to maintain your your alignment just because you want to conserve some of that RCS tank because one, the main purpose for the RCS is when you get into outer space and you need to make adjustments to the positioning of your ship in order to do control burn. So we are approaching the 10 kilometer mark. Do is we're going to get ourselves into position here, begin to throttle up, and head right for that 270. Again, you can head to 90, same rules are going to apply, they're just going to be a little bit different once you get into orbit. So the outside tanks are about to burn out here, once they do we're going to go ahead and detach them, they have burnt out space, and you can see now we have a full tank of fuel on our main engine. So we're just going to let this burn, you'll see our surface speed is approaching 500 meters a second here. We are going to let that get to closer to a thousand. You'll see a switch to an orbital trajectory. And then we'll begin to flatten out a little bit more and aim more towards the horizon. Okay, so it's pretty much just a waiting game now. The hardest part is getting into the orbit. And then we have to just set up our controlled burns to get us into a slingshot around the moon. So we're approaching a kilometer a second, so we're going to begin to flatten out just a little bit. Let's go to 40,000 meters, press the X key. And you'll see our Apple app shows us 61,000 meters. That is fairly low. Let's go ahead and throttle up a little bit more. Get that over 70,000. Press the M key, click on the Apple apps, 71,000, that's good. Press and hold the orbital key, which is a key on the right. Make sure you get a nice even ring around the Earth. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, people spend too much time worrying about getting a perfect orbit when really you're only there briefly. All right, so we are in a position where we're going to do a control burn almost right away to get us into a uh, into an orbit. And then away we will go. So we're going to speed up time a little bit here. because the uh, We're in a pretty good position, which was a good advantage for us because we have to use very little fuel on the RCS tanks. Ten seconds left. Let's speed on time a little bit. 
and throttle up. So it's gonna be a 40 second ish burn. We have to get up to it's approximately 2300 meters per second, 2.3 kilometers per second to get into an orbit. And you can see your progress by pressing the M key. You'll see we are slowly building that uh, that orbit. You can pretty much get into an orbit by yourself as long as you aim for that orbital key, the uh, yellow marker on the on the gyro ball there at the bottom, because uh, that's always the orbital. And as long as you're there and keep an eye on your M, your map, uh, you'll you'll find a way to get in orbit. It's pretty easy to do. So we are in an orbit now, very low orbit on one side, 66,000, 237,000 on the other side. So what we're going to do is see the moon. You zoom out. The moon is there, closest object to us. Click on it and click on set as target. So now you're going to position it so the moon is at a right angle to the earth or curbing, whatever you want to call it. And you can see we are spinning around in a clockwise motion. So we have to do a control burn. If you went 90 degrees, you'd be traveling the opposite way. So we're going to do a control burn at around the lowest point, uh, slightly past it, and you're going to click and you're going to drag out. So you're going to see the escape orbit pull out. So now once you get it out, um, let's put it somewhere else first. We got to go a little bit later. Once you get it out there, um, that's your planned projector trajectory. Just like if you're sitting up in orbit, you're going to see the two triangles appear there. The one that's going around the orange ring is your ship position and the other one is your moon's position. So when your ship gets to that position, that's where the moon's going to be. You have to kind of go a little bit closer and you'll see this change. So the orange is the trajectory you're going to go. The perp Once you get to the end of the orange, you're going to basically encounter the moon. The moon's uh, gravity and orbit is going to suck you in, but you're going to be going so fast you're not going to be able to orbit the moon. You're going to do an, uh, basically an escape. It's going to slingshot you around. Once we get to that point, we will do a, um, a small burn to get out of that escape trajectory and into a, uh, an orbital trajectory. Okay, so we have quite a bit of ways to wait before we do our our control burn here. Okay, try and use the RCS as little as you can again. Um, sometimes you may have enough fuel to get you not only to the moon on this big tank, but also into a orbit. Uh, we got 25 minutes of real time to wait, so we're going to speed up time just a little and just try and hold your position on the orbit because that means you're always pointed into the nose uh, right into the orbit you're facing it so you're uh, you don't have to do any adjustments later on so you're going to uh, we're losing our position here <clears throat> excuse me okay so we are again slowly waiting Gravity wants to, seems to want to be take, swinging us around, but that's okay because it's going to bring us back around. Alright, so we don't have much time, so let's go ahead and work on slinging ourselves back around to get into this control burn. So you can see this will be a nice short burn as well, 22 seconds. Uh, meters per second here is extremely important. Um, if you miss it by even just a fraction of a second or a fraction of a meters per second and that has huge complications to um, your trajectory so once you're done your burn it's important to press the M key and see how much you missed by if you missed it all you'll be able to tell um, we're gonna talk about that once we get into this trajectory alright so we're gonna begin this burn and we're off Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean. We're almost done the burn here, and that'll be the end of the video. Three, two, one. It's better to undershoot than overshoot. So if you press the M key, we'll see we undershot a lot. Um, the blue line is where we're headed. The orange was the goal. So I'm going to show you how to make some micro adjustments here. In this case, you're just going to aim right. In. Instead of aiming at the blue, you're going to aim right into the orbital um, thing on the on the adorable, I don't really, my lingo is bad, and you're going to press shift and then 
stop it right away. Press the M key. We've made some progress. Let's push it again. Press the M key again. And there you'll see we are right on target now. So now that's pretty much it. We're going to... Um, let's delete that so you can see our trajectory. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. Let's uh, let's see what this looks like from far away. You can see we are getting farther away from the Earth at 100 times speed. Okay, so that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. In the next video, we are going to take a look at the moon approach and how to go ahead and deal with that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you, again, if you did, please leave a like button below and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. See you later.